Okay, so in this video, I just want to show you how to use Reaxis um, to look up or to search for complexes because there's a few a few minor details that you need to include when searching um, on Reaxis for complexes specifically, which you might not be aware of. Um, and then just some general reminders of how to use Reaxis and things like that. So. Let's start again where we need to find it. So we go to the library website and we go to search. And then there's this idiotic new layout. Then you go to subject guides. Um, you scroll down to chemistry. <clears throat> you go to reaxis. You find reaxis. Um, it will ask you to log in. If you're not on campus, if you're on campus, the campus Wi Fi, well, then you're on the server. So they won't be bothered. You can then register. If you're already registered, then you can just sign in. So please register. If you're not registered yet, you can use your um, UP email address for that. Um, and if it does not work, then you must email Miss van der Linde. Remember her from the library um, chemical information task that you did in CMI 282. Um, so please register for Reaxis. Then you can save your searches. You can save your structures. It just makes your life a bit easier. Right. Okay, so where we want to go is we want to draw, and uh, we want to draw chromium complexes. So, of course, chromium for this experiment, and then cobalt for the next one, but this, whatever I'm showing you here, applies for anything from here on. And let's just start with the general octahedral layout. Um, so, I will start with this. So This is actually how I draw any octahedral complex ever in my life. Um, I draw the general octahedral structure. These are all methyl groups, but we'll change everything that we need to change it to now. And then remember, we have oxygens coordinated everywhere. And they have some different substructures um, now, which is the point of this part. So let's first draw the trans structure, <clears throat> the trans diaqua bis, the diaqua, yeah, the diaqua bis oxalato complex. Um, so we start with that. These are connected. Oh, goodness. Huh? Just use control Z to undo. Okay, and then we need bonds like that. All right, and then we need to put more oxygens over here. There, there, and there. And these, of course, needs to be need to be double bonds. Promise I'm not drunk. Anyway, um, so okay, we have these now. Then we need to change something here in the bond type. So if you hover over these, you'll see it pops up and tells you something. You can make aromatic bonds, you can make um, stereo bonds, etc. We want to go to the one that says coordinate because these are coordination bonds, right? So. See, the moment we make them coordination bond, it realizes, oh, this is an aqua ligand. It's not an OH group bonded to it. It's an aqua ligand. The same will happen here. But now you see it changes these bonds to OHs, which is not what we really want. And why is that? Because if it looks at oxygen and knows oxygen needs to make two bonds to be um, valently balanced, so to be neutral. So in other words, but we know these oxygens aren't balanced. They are negatively charged. So we need to change that as well. Atom properties, so right click, and then you change the charge to minus one, and then you see, ah, okay, it removes the hydrogen from that. So atom properties, minus one, right click, atom properties, minus one. Um, there's probably some sort of like select feature where you can, let me see, that you can select multiple things and you can. Select all of them. All right, and there you have your trans diaqua bis um, oxalato chromium complex. Another thing, remember the chromium also has a charge. The chromium has a charge of plus three, all right? Um, and now yeah, that's essentially what you have for here um, for the structure. At, at this stage, you know, you know, you don't have the charge of the total complex. Remember, this complex has a charge of minus one, and there's a potassium ion next to it, and that crystallizes alongside it. Um, but you don't have to worry about that for the access purposes. We just want to tell the access we want to search this. Right. 
Okay, so remember a useful tool with Reaxis is the fact that you can download this as an image. If you go there to the little floppy disk, um, and if you don't know what a floppy disk is, that's a floppy disk. Um, and then you can download this as an image. You can change a bunch of things here. You can change the, the background to transparent, and you can use it wherever you download it. You see you have it here, right? Open a Word document. If you go here, you insert a shape, you insert a drawing canvas. I just have all these things open. Uh, this is Marvin's output. We copy this, we paste it in here. There's a drawing canvas. I don't know why I didn't want to paste it in here. Paste it in there. Right, there we have it. Um, we want to go to draw again. No, not that draw. I'm going to insert shapes and we're looking for the double braces. I'm going to put it in double braces, make it nice, thick, and black. You insert the text box, close Y, it has a negative charge. You should make it nice and thick. This has a negative charge. You just remove all these things about. Um, just remember how to do this. We want to make full is no full outline no outline. Look at me helping you. you know, just because I want you to be extraordinary. Extraordinary. And right, and it also needs to be a potassium iron here. Right? So potassium iron. And again. There we go. All right. So there is your complex. Let's just these would be nice to see it. There you go. All right. Okay. You might also notice that there's something in your prep guide that says there's a tri aqua part that is crystallized alongside it. So everywhere where we speak about these complexes, there's something that says trihydrate. And I'll speak now about what that means. But in essence, the, uh, it is this is the complex itself, um, how it looks. Right. And you can draw your others like what they are. Getting back to Reaxis, right? I've taught you a lot more. You've gotten a lot more from this video than what your friends who aren't going to watch this video is going to get. So let's transfer to Query. You go to Find. Of course, you can make these things much more beautiful and work a lot more on it. I just wanted to do something quickly to show you some basic ideas. And then you get to a page like this. Now, usually I use the first one that says Structure as Drawn. But I've already gone through these results. And some of them, like unfortunately, only the first one is actually um, correct um, in essence. And it talks about the race mate. And I've looked at the article that is linked to it. And it's not really um, that applicable. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the one that is average similarity, including totemers and stereochemistry, some rings and salts, etc. Because now you just need to be cognizant of what's going on here, right? So you just need to go look at the structure and ask yourself, okay, is this what it is? So that those aqua ligands are trans. There is a minus charge for the complex because it's one, two, three, four, chromium is three plus, right? So that is right. If we have the potassium ion, total charge minus one, and there's an aqua. You see, there's a, there's a water crystallized alongside the crystal structure. That's what that trihydrate means. It means there's just water just vibing alongside the crystal structure. It crystallizes with it. Um, that's what that trihydrate means. It actually means there's three waters crystallizing alongside um, the structure. Okay, so we see that one is fine. This one is actually the cis. Um, you can see it's the cis one, All right? So we've searched for the trans one. Now we found the cis one. So go and, you know, Nice there, you have that one. All right, and then if you scroll down, there's another one. This one does not have the waters in it. Water does not matter for spectra, right? As long as you have the complex. That's a very important point. So if you go and look at this one's spectra versus the one that has the water crystallized alongside the complex and you look at its spectra, spectra should be the same. The water doesn't have an effect on it. This water crystallized alongside, even sodium crystallized alongside it, that potassium does not influence the complex. The complex is still the same. Remember, it's just the counter ion just differs or 
Um, this one has three waters, you know, so this one is exactly what we have, you know, potassium dioxalato, aqua chromate, trihydrate, exactly what we're looking at. This one is dihydrate, it just means the number of waters that is actually in a, what we call a unit cell of the crystal, and it doesn't really affect um, any physical properties. It's just the physical crystal structure. The important part is this middle part, that that is correct. So if that is correct and fits what you wanted to look at, the potassium and the sodium, that, I mean, that can differ. The number of waters can differ. There's sometimes they crystallize it with other things like um, <clears throat> other positive ions. I mean, like um, imidazolium or other organic molecules. You see this one has penta aqua. That does not matter. You can use this, any of these, to look at spectra or uh, physical data or try to read up on the synthesis, etc., to get more information for your literature searches. Right. Okay, so let's just quickly look at something here. Uh, we looked at UV, so let's look at something. We looked at UV in water. So this is from 1902, probably not going to have a spectrum. These are all from 18 foot sacks, so we're going to find something there. Mm. This is from some Gemlin Hunt book. So I'm not going to get something there. So let's, okay, that's the cis one. So let's see what's going on here. Um, 1988, this seems like a good, um, good idea. Why? Okay, so it doesn't give me full text. Okay, it just gives me that. So now, Sorry, that's not good. I just want to get, let's get back to the details. Now, this is actually good that this happens. So let's go to the library. We go to Google Scholar. Then we will search this. We just hope this is in English. Actually, okay, so the name, let's search the name. Go to Google Scholar, we insert the name, we say submit. Right, we see, oh, Bose. Bose is actually a very famous um, Indian scientist, Arthur Bose, um, responsible for a lot of work with Einstein, or not with Einstein. Einstein and Bose did similar work, and they found, um, anyway, um, but this is not the same Bose, but um, just the interesting thing. Okay, so this is just a citation that is, okay, so that's probably why we're not able to get the, um, oh, goodness sakes, why we're not able to get the um, reference. All right, so let's try something else. Mm. This is the one we were at, right? Right, water, spectra. Let's try this again. The one from an earlier time. Okay, let's perhaps try one. Let's try the one that is published in 1935. This is also not going in the, in the direction of what we wanted to do. Okay, I'm going to have to page and page and page and page. Anyway, point being, this is actually what you're supposed to be doing. So, spectra, and then you look up for hours and hours and you need to find something. There's a bunch of pages to go through. I don't really want to go through it. I just actually wanted to get one that works. Um, so maybe I can do maybe I can do the cis one. You know, actually I know there's one that works. I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here. Okay. And if you click on full text, it's going to take you to a nice page. It should take you to the page of whatever. And you're going to be able to sometimes view the article, sometimes not. If you're not able to view the article, what you can do is you need to take the title. So, um, or the DUI. DUI also works. Remember what the DUI is. We went through that in CMY 282. Oh, no, I copied that instead of pasted. Um, there's a DUI. Just another citation. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. Well, anyway, I've downloaded this one. There we go. 
And there you see you can access the UV bus spectra of a complex. Right. You just need to read which one is which because they've run a few complexes. They've plotted the same thing on there. Right. So that's how you get information from reaxis. Or you take the, um, the name of the article and you go to Google Scholar and you search it there. And once you've searched it in Google Scholar, you can you know how to get it from there because you went through it in CMR 282. All right. So that's essentially what I wanted to do here. You can use Reaxis just to draw your structures. Not that there's much to, so you basically we're going to use it to draw your structures here for experiment two. Experiment three, I'm going to ask you to get IR results for um, literature IR for some of the complexes. So as you saw, I don't can't remember if there's some of these, there was definitely one that showed IR results as well. Um, crystal phase is very interesting, okay, but not something you're going to be very interested in. Um, needles, flakes, you see, so you can actually compare it to what you've gotten. You see, there's quite a number of forms that it comes in, prisms, needles, flakes. Hmm. Um, so really, please just spend some time, read up on these things, look through it. Reaxis really summarizes the information for you already here. So you just, you don't have to go read all these articles. You have the reference for it. You know how to incorporate it into Mendeley and you know then, and you've already gotten the information here. It actually, and remember it actually, oh, there's the IR. I was speaking about what you're going to do for experiment three. Um, and the uv -vis, it does give you the range in which the UV vis and sometimes it gives you a peak now. So it says at 686, and our peak is for this was for which isomer is this again? Let's just check. So it's for the trans isomer. So their peak is no oh, 686. There's a peak there, definitely. Right, so confirms that um our spectrum also has a peak at 686. You can see there's a little hump. It's one of the, it's the weakest of the humps, but definitely confirms that um, correlates with what they've also gotten. All right, so um, thank goodness. Uh, this at least ended on a, on a high note. I was still thinking this was going to go bad, and I didn't want to re-record this video. Um, all right, so that's essentially your reaxis. Play around with it. At least just draw the structures with it. Make it nice and pretty like this. Or, and use reaxis to get your sources. I promise for experiment three is going to be much better because there's a lot of structures and you can look them up. Um, this one, you just need to go through the 785 pages of um, information and look through um, all these parts of information.